Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Coming up on Newsbreak. A 24-hour long concert for climate action. The D's celebrate their grand final win. And a baguette-making competition. But before we get started, why not hit subscribe? Today's kids will live through three times as many climate disasters as their grandparents. That's one of the findings from a new report today that says climate change will make life much harder for kids all over the world. Here's Leila. This report alarms us children because it's further than a political debate. It's our future and our safety that is at risk. Eva's passionate about fighting climate change and a new report is backing up what she and a lot of others are saying. We almost don't really need a report to say this because they already know it. These kids are living it. But they're speaking out and they're not being heard. So that's why we really wanted to back in what they're saying and their lived experience with the data. Erin from Save the Children is one of the authors of the Born into the Climate Crisis report. Sorry, just a sec, just give some water. Yeah, no worries. You're like, I have a lot to say. <laughs> Get me ready. So in their lifetimes, children born in 2020 in Australia can expect to face 30% more bushfires than a baby boomer who was born in 1960. They can also expect to be exposed to 3.4 times more drought, 1.4 times more river floods and over four times as many heat waves. Kids all over the world are going to be affected and many like Eva say governments need to listen to them. Our voice and our concerns are essentially key stakeholders in the climate crisis and therefore deserve to be heard when making these political decisions. But there's also a reason to be hopeful. The report also found if we can limit warming to 1.5 degrees, those extreme weather events won't be as bad or as frequent. And we've quantified that and said, this could make a huge difference for a whole generation of children. Billie Eilish, Lizzo and Ed Sheeran. These pop icons have all just taken part in a 24-hour long concert. It's called Global Citizen Live, and yes, if it sounds familiar, it's because it also happened last year. The goal is to raise awareness of climate change, along with a bunch of other things. This is real. Like, it's no joke. It really makes me hopeful for the world. More than 60 artists from around the world took part. It's been 57 years in the making, but the Melbourne Demons are finally AFL Premiers again, and they're pretty happy about it. All that and more in sport. It's party time for the Melbourne Demons. Yeah, the Demons! 60,000 fans packed Optus Stadium in Perth to see the Dees win their first Premiership since 1964. They beat the Western Bulldogs by a whopping 74 points after a pretty tight tussle in the first half. But after three goals in a minute, Melbourne stormed to victory. Bang! Bang, bang, bang! Over in the NRL and the grand final teams are set. The Penrith Panthers will take on the South Sydney Rabbitohs in this weekend's decider. The Rabbitohs smashed the Sea Eagles on Friday while the Panthers scraped across the line against the Storm. The grand final will be held up in Brisbane, the first time it's ever been played outside of Sydney. And it's not great news for our cricketers. Australia's 26-match ODI winning streak has come to an end after a two-wicket loss to India. Ashley Gardner top scored for the Aussies with 67 runs. But after needing just four runs from the final over, Julan Goswami hit the winning runs for India. We're going old-timey now because all I've been given to eat here is bread and water. Ha! Just like these next stories. Hey, could I at least get some jam or something? Absolutely not. First up, the bread. And in France, the title of the best baguette is up for grabs. 172 bakers in Paris all submitted their best baguettes. They're judged on everything from the taste, the crumbs, the shape and the size. It's all very technical stuff. The winner gets six and a half thousand bucks and the honour of providing baguettes to the President's Palace for a year. Now to the water. And you might remember Wally the Walrus from earlier this year. He was last seen drifting on a chunk of sea ice near Ireland. But now he's popped up in Iceland, more than 900 kilometres away. Safe and sound. And finally, across the pond, or should I say, across the loch, <laughs> is a rare sighting of the Loch Ness Monster. Or is it? 
a YouTube video by Richard here has gone viral after viewers started to point out this strange shape in the water. Admittedly, he was canoeing across Loch Ness, so that makes sense, but I've got a gut feeling there's something uh, fishy about this. But if anyone's gonna know, it's our graphics guy. It's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess that's that then. Well, that's all the news we've got for you today. In the meantime, don't forget you can always hit subscribe and eat some bread. See you tomorrow.